For additional assembly tips, information, and owner's documents, please visit our assembly support page for the Ride One Up Limited. Carefully remove the bike. This is easier with an extra person. Unless you're using a bike stand, we suggest a padded surface and standing the bike upright, not on its side. Remove all parts and tools. Parts include pedals, charger, owner's manual, chain ring with crank arm. Thoroughly inspect the box for any remaining parts. We recommend keeping the box for the first 30 days. Tools needed. 15 mm wrench, two through 10 mm hex wrench set, which is included. Cut the zip ties to free up the front fork, front wheel, saddle with seat post, and handlebars. Use caution not to cut any electrical wires or scratch your new frame. Also avoid cutting zip ties that are used for cable routing, one example being the motor cable on the right chain stay. Step 1. Installing the fork. Remove the compression bolt and cap. Slide all components off, noting the order and orientation. The upper and lower bearings are installed in the head tube of the bike. Only the crown race should be on the fork as shown before installing the fork. The sealed headset bearing should already be installed in the top and bottom of the head tube. With the brake caliper, cables, and wires on the left, insert the steering tube of the fork through the head tube carefully. Guide it through the center of the bearings. Seat the fork, ensuring a snug fit. Install the upper headset components. First the compression ring. Center the steerer tube in the headset and slide the compression ring down until the lip sits in between the fork steerer tube and bearings. Then add the conical and cylindrical spacers. Next, we will slide on the stem with handlebars. Please check orientation for proper wire and cable routing. You may need to flip or rotate the handlebars. Slide on the stem. Note the top of the stem sits slightly higher than the top of the fork. Install the cap and bolt. Make sure the fork is properly seated and secure at the top and bottom. Tighten the compression bolt before tightening either stem pinch bolt. Tighten the bolt until you feel some resistance when rotating the handlebars as shown, but not too tight that it will not turn. The fork should only rotate smoothly. It should not shift in any direction relative to the head tube. For now, the pinch bolts on the stem do not need to be tightened. Installing the front wheel. Avoid touching the brake rotor with your fingers. Remove and save the small plastic spacer from the brake caliper. It is important you do not squeeze the brake lever before the disc rotor is in place. Carefully align the front wheel with the brake rotor on the left. Slide the front wheel into place with the brake rotor centered between the brake pads to avoid bending the rotor. It should go in smoothly and never be forced. Ensure it is fully seated and well aligned. Install the quick release skewer. Note the angle of the conical springs. The cones are pointing inward. Slide the skewer through the axle and hand tighten. It should be tight enough that it's difficult to close and should leave an impression on your hand. You may need to redo this step if the wheel is not properly aligned and spinning smoothly. Aligning your handlebars. If a torque wrench is available, torque specifications are listed on the stem. If not, refer to the user manual. Loosen the clamp bolts and rotate the angle and center the handlebars to preference. Tighten the four bolts in a cross pattern. Spacing should be even on all four corners. We can now align the handlebars to be perpendicular to the front wheel and tighten the two pinch bolts of the stem, securing it to the fork. With the front wheel installed and the kickstand down, you can now remove the rest of the packing materials. If you're assembling the Limited with a torque sensor, it requires an extra step when installing the chain ring. Please see the link in the description below. When installing the chain ring, make sure the left and right crank are pointed in opposite directions, 180 degrees apart. Slide the chain ring on and carefully place the chain onto the chain ring. Install the right crank arm and chain ring with your 8mm hex wrench. Tighten bolts on both sides as tight as possible by hand, if using a torque wrench, to 40 newton meters. Install the pedals by hand. Pedals show L for left and R for right. The left pedal is reverse threaded. Begin threading this by hand counterclockwise. You can finish tightening with a 15 mm crescent wrench. Installing the seat post and seat. Loosen the seat post clamp lever. Insert past the minimum insertion point. Tighten the seat post clamp properly. 
You can also adjust the angle of the seat by loosening the bolts, adjusting it, then tightening the bolts on the seat post. Ensure the seat is not slid too far back or forward and that both bolts are properly tightened. Having a seat parallel with the ground is typically ideal. Inflating the tires. Minimum and maximum PSI is shown on the sidewall of the tires. Use a PSI gauge when inflating. After a few pumps, ensure the tires are properly seated on both sides, all the way around the rim. On to the final steps. Inspect and if necessary, make adjustments to cables and wires routing. Turning to the left or right, the cables and wires are relaxed and not under tension. If you can see or feel tension in the cables and wires, readjust them. Protect the cables and wires from stress wherever possible. If a cable is under tension, caught, or damaged, you'll more than likely experience a critical failure of one of the components. Adjusting the brake calipers. Spin the front and rear wheel. Inspect the clearance between the pads for space. A quick adjustment can be made by loosening the bolts of the caliper, allowing it to be properly positioned, and then carefully tightening them. Brake adjustment is often needed after assembly. For detailed brake adjustments, please see the video link in the description below. Make sure your gears are shifting evenly and that the derailleur hanger is straight before riding your bike or using the motor. With the bike off, gently pedaling by hand, verify the chain will not go past the largest cog into the wheel when you continue to shift. Failure to do so could result in damage to your new e-bike. Please check the description below for a separate video on how to properly align and index your gears. Now is a good time to adjust the length of your kickstand. The arm is adjustable to set your preferred standing angle and should be tightened so the bolt doesn't come loose when riding. Removing your battery. Insert and twist key to the unlock position to remove the battery. Reinstalling the battery, ensure it is fully seated and the key is in the lock position. Remove the key. Carefully align the notch and the arrows on the display port and display wire. Be careful and avoid damaging the pins. When you're ready, turn on the bike by holding the middle button briefly. The throttle is active and will send power to the motor. The bike default setup has five adjustable levels of pedal assist. Press the plus button to increase your pedal assist level. Press the minus button to decrease. Do not leave your pedal assist on when you're not in a riding position. For advanced display settings, please see the video in the description below. Now, it is best to make sure everything is properly tightened and secured. Visually confirm the rear wheel is fully seated and use a wrench to verify the nuts are tight. Regular safety checks are important for every bike and especially e-bikes. For tips on a full safety check, please visit our support page or in the link below. Thanks for watching this overview of the Limited Assembly.